Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to our Monday, Thursday worship service here this evening. And for our worship service tonight, we go back. We go back to the upstairs room where Jesus instituted the supper and see not only the cross and the Passover lamb that Jesus was and being that perfect uh, Passover lamb, but also the feast of paradise that he shares with us. Just a note about our service this evening, it is a little different than usual. Our focus, which is usually the gospel, is placed right next to Holy Communion so that we can see, be there in the upper room as Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper and then celebrate that Lord's Supper ourselves, which he has given us to eat and drink. We'll begin by singing our opening hymn, hymn 313. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. scripture we consider for this evening comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 beginning at verse 23 where Paul writes for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, tonight on our Monday, Thursday service, we want to go back to that upper, upstairs room, the upper room. And we just want to imagine for maybe one moment, putting aside everything that's on our mind, of what it would be like to see everything that's going on leading up to that celebration of the Lord's Supper. To see the importance and the truths that Jesus is trying to teach his disciples, not only in that room, but for all time and in all places. And so tonight we have the perfect way to remember him. We have the perfect way to remember his grace, his love for us. We have the perfect way to remember the strength that he gives us to face the temptations that Satan will hurl against us. And so tonight, I just want you to imagine what it would be like to be in Peter's shoes. What it would be like to be sitting in Peter's place. And just imagine that you're hearing Peter recount for you, towards the end of his life, everything that's going to happen, or everything that did happen at that first Monday, Thursday. And maybe it might go something like this. 
You see, that first Passover that Jesus celebrated with us, and it was, surprisingly, the first Passover that we celebrated with him, was so unusual. Because growing up in the Israelite community, growing up as a Jewish person, there are so many things that that meal, that Passover, meant to me. For me, it was a source of national pride that God had chosen the Israelites, that God had chosen his people, that God had instituted this Passover for the people of Israel to remind them that though they had been slaves for 400 years in Egypt, though they had suffered much, they were still his chosen people. And this was his Passover for them. And so though the years may have gone by, and things kind of get lost. It wasn't until that night where Jesus led his first and only Seder meal that I got to see what this meal was all about. And even though I didn't realize it at the time, there was so much there, so much that Jesus gave us as an understanding for what would happen in the hours to come and then the life as a Christian ahead of us. And so, well, let's go back to that Passover meal. The events leading up to it had not been the greatest. Prior to going up to Jerusalem, Jesus had just been rejected by a bunch of people. He had fed them, you know, might know the feeding of the 5,000. And then people wanted to make him king. But Jesus didn't want that. And they rejected him. And maybe I didn't understand it at the time because I was hoping that he would be a king. I was hoping that he would be the king that would lead us and throw off the Roman oppression and the Roman slavery that was going on in that day. But that wasn't Jesus. In fact, as we got closer and closer to the Passover in Jerusalem. He kept talking about how he had to go up to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the chief priests, the Pharisees, and the teachers of the law, and that he would be crucified. Crucified. That's not the way I thought the king would go. That's not the way I thought the Messiah would be. But God proved me wrong. And so the, the circumstances leading up to that were very sorrowful. Fear had gripped us because Jesus had been talking about suffering and dying, not ruling as a king. And so we get to that night. And there we are in the upstairs room. Thirteen places, one of them's Jesus. And we have to figure out where we're going to sit. You can imagine what happened. We were all arguing who should be in the best spot. Now, I've been around Jesus long enough to realize that this might be something. So what I did was I went and found the lowest place. Remember, the first shall be last. The last shall be first. So I find the lowest place. Maybe I was being humble. And I can't tell you that there wasn't probably a sinful part of me hoping that Jesus would have called me up to a better place like he had often talked about. He never did that. And then we get on to the meal. But before that, we have to realize that, this, that even though the circumstances weren't the best, even worse was our attitude. That argument about who was the best was going to be the least of our problems by the end of the night. We were all at our worst. Not only did Judas later on leave the meal in the middle, not only did he betray Jesus, but all of us, all of us disciples, in one way or another, abandoned Jesus. We all fell asleep while he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. We couldn't keep watch, not even for an hour. 
And then me? I abandoned him twice. Once I thought I'd abandoned, I abandoned his teachings when all of a sudden he was being arrested. And they're going to take away my Messiah. They're going to take away my Savior. They're going to take away my hope for the people of Israel. And in my mind, I disagreed with God so much. That could not possibly happen, God. I was going to put an end to it. I was going to find a way. I was going to stop this. This was not the way that the Messiah was supposed to go. Without him, the people of Israel would be lost. And so I abandoned his teaching by cutting off Malchus's ear. And after I'd given up hope, Jesus rebuked me there, and after I'd given up hope, I follow at a distance. And you know, you know what happened. Not once, not twice, three times I denied that I knew Jesus. And that third time I was calling curses down upon myself from God's throne, saying that if I knew the man, I'd be dead. And then the look that Jesus had said it all. I was not. I was at my worst that day. It was the worst possible time to celebrate the Passover. And I had the worst attitude to celebrate that Passover. You know what? Even when the circumstances don't seem right, and even when our sin may make us feel the worst, that's when Jesus shows us the best. He had the best Passover meal that day because he showed us Everything And the way that Passover meal was supposed to be done, he showed us the best of what he did for us. And it all started out in the same way that every Passover meal. Once we're all sitting and reclining at the table, there Jesus pulls up the cup and blesses it in the same words. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, for you have created the fruit of the vine. And he passes this cup around. And we drink. Celebrating that fellowship we have, not just as brothers, sisters of Israel, but that fellowship we have with God. And then the next part. This is where the leader gets up and he's supposed to wash your hands and we got our hands ready to go for our hands to be washed. But then Jesus comes, takes out his outer cloak off, puts it aside, wraps a towel around his waist. And he doesn't start washing our hands. This wasn't right. Instead, he washes our feet. Throws us off for a little bit. You might remember, too, I was the one, very end, saying, Jesus, you not only need to wash my feet, but you need to wash everything else. Another self-righteous claim on my part. But Jesus had a couple points there. First, he's showing us that he's the servant of all servants. That he did not come to be served, but to serve to give his life as a ransom for many. And then later on, after he's risen from the dead, I understand too what he's saying there. Just as we would wash our hands at the Passover meal to, so that our hands were clean and ready to eat, he washed our feet. feet. He washed them so that they would be ready to go and share the news of the Passover lamb to proclaim the death and the resurrection that he had won. But that wasn't even the best part yet. Then we get, after all Jesus has washed our feet, now he's going to dip the bitter herbs in vinegar and pass those bitter herbs around. Growing up, I knew this tale. These bitter herbs were a reminder of the slavery that we had in Egypt that our people suffered under, and it was a reminder of what we had been freed from. 
And yet those bitter herbs in the hands of the Passover lamb, knowing that it's that same vinegar mixed with wine that he's going to be drinking tomorrow so he can make his proclamation, knowing that whatever bitter suffering we had, our forefathers had while they were in Egypt, whatever bitter suffering that that carpas would represent paled in comparison to the bitter suffering and death of the perfect Passover lamb. And then we get to it. He blesses the bread, takes it out. This is the bread of misery which our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. All that are hungry, come and eat. All that are needy, come and keep the Passover. We were those needy people. We needed that forgiveness that only Christ alone had won for us. And now at this point, this is where we tell the account of that first Passover. That our forefathers were in Egypt, in the land of slavery, and God sent nine plagues in order to caused Pharaoh to release us from slavery, but he didn't. And on the 10th plague, a vicious, unfathomable plague, where God goes throughout Egypt taking the firstborn of everybody and everything, all the fathers and mothers lose their firstborn. All the livestock in Egypt lost their firstborn too. But not us. That blood of the Passover lamb painted on our doorposts as a reminder that God keeps the promise. And it was our Messiah, our Passover lamb there, whose blood would be shed whose perfect suffering and death the next day would cover us and cover over our imperfections. It'd cover over my denial and my abandoning my Savior. It'd cover over my self-righteousness and my lies. All of it covered over by the perfect Passover lamb. And as we celebrate that Passover meal with the lamb, roasted lamb, the bitter herbs, and the bread, then he takes the bread, blesses it like he always has, like they always have. But this time it's a little different. He hands it around and says, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. How could we forget? How could we forget what he was going to do the next day? How could we forget what he gave us that night? And though our minds could not understand it, especially that night, and even though my mind still to this day does not understand it, how Jesus' true body can be in and with that bread, how through that body he gives me the forgiveness of sins, how through that body he strengthens my trust in him, that very body crushed, pierced, and beaten for me is the same body that I receive in Holy Communion. And then after that, he takes this cup of blessing, blesses it, passes it around and says, this is the blood of a new covenant, the new covenant. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The old covenant was based upon how if we listen to God, he would bless us. This new covenant with the same blood shed on the cross of Christ now given to us. This new covenant reminds us and makes us perfect because of the perfection of Christ and the perfection of our Passover lamb without spot, without blemish, without any defect, it makes us perfect and holy in God's sight. 
And so to this day, whenever we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we proclaim what our Lord has done for us, how he has made everything perfect for us, how he has made us holy, and he strengthens our faith through us, through that, through his body and blood. And so how foolish we were to think that this Passover that Christ had or God had instituted was something of national pride or even our own focus on our own righteousness. Thankfully, Jesus showed us in washing our feet and giving us his body and blood and blessing God and thanking him for the blessings he gave us that day. He showed us a servant's caring heart and not only did he show us a servant's caring heart, but he showed us and gave us that, not only that forgiveness of sins he had won for us alone, but he gave us the strength to proclaim what he had done, not only here, but to the ends of the world. Later on, that, later on in my life, I would run into Paul, Apostle Paul. And just like me, he was very zealous for God, but headed out in all the wrong directions. He was arresting people in the name of God, persecuting them in the name of God. And then Jesus showed him the truth. Jesus handed, him, handed down everything that Paul needed to know to be the perfect servant for God, a perfect servant for God. And so what a blessing it is that when I got to meet him, we were able to see what the Lord had shared with him. And it was what had been handed down and what had happened to us. That the Lord had given us his body and blood in and with the bread and the wine for the forgiveness of sins and to strengthen our faith. So, brothers and sisters, as I await trial here in prison, remember what Christ has done for you this Monday, Thursday. Remember that he, the perfect Passover lamb, has covered you in his blood and forgiven all your sins. Remember that he has made you a part of a new covenant. Remember the body and blood that he gives you for the forgiveness of your sins, for the strengthening of your faith. And that even though we're at, that we might be at the worst and circumstances might not be the best, Jesus still gives us his best. He gives us his body and blood for forgiveness. He gives us his body and blood to strengthen our faith. He gives us his body and blood to make us strong, to proclaim his death until he comes again so that you might know about the perfect servant of Jesus Christ, the perfect Passover lamb, and not just you, but the whole world. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue by singing verses 6 through 8 of hymn 313. You may be seated. <laughs>
stand. We'll continue with the confession of sins on the bottom of page three in the message. Let us confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess that I have not loved you with all my heart in what I have done and left undone. I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. I have not loved my brothers and sisters as myself. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. I am truly sorry for my sins. I repent of them. I beg for your mercy, O Lord. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for us. Cleanse me from my sins. Release me from my guilt. Grant me your Holy Spirit to amend my sinful life. The Almighty God has been merciful to us and has sent his Son to die for all. For his sake, God forgives our sins and calls us from darkness to his marvelous light. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven us and made us at peace with God and has promised us the power to forgive and love each other. Relying on his promise, therefore be at peace with one another. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, in our words, and in our actions. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give us your true body and blood as a remembrance of your suffering and death on the cross. Grant us so firmly to believe your words and promises that we may always partake of this sacrament to our eternal good. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson for this evening comes from Exodus chapter 12. And here we're reminded that the Passover pointed ahead to the great sacrifice that Jesus would make to save us from our sins and death. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. Not one of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frames and will pass over that doorway. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does the ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up during the night 
And there was loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm for this evening and for this evening comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, where Paul reminds us also that Holy Communion is, is real. It's not just symbolizing Jesus' body and blood, but it is Jesus' body and blood connected to us, connects us to God and his forgiveness. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation or a communion in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation or a communion in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. This is the word of the Lord. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We'll now confess our faith and we'll use the words of the Nicene Creed on page 6. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continue by singing the hymn of the day, hymn 309. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. covenant and giver of salvation. For 
for fulfilling your promise to establish a new covenant through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. As our Lord Jesus Christ gave thanks when he broke, and as he gave thanks to you when he took the cup, he also gave thanks to you. Precious Savior, both priest and offering, awe and wonder fill our hearts as we partake of your body broken for us and your blood shed for us. In our poverty of righteousness, we have nothing to offer. Without tremendous sacrifice, we would be still in our sins. O Holy Spirit, dwell within us as we remember our Lord's death in the sacrament. Enter our hearts to strengthen our faith and fill us with gratitude for your great mercy. As our Lord served his disciples by washing their feet, so may we also humbly serve one another. We pray the prayer that you have taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 14. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished and, re and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table, eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. 
continue with the sacrament on page 9. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right to give you thanks, O Lord, mighty Father, everlasting God, for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this night gave us a new command and a new covenant, which he established by his sacrifice on our behalf. Therefore, we approach your table with repentant, yet expectant and joyful hearts, yearning for the forgiveness you have so freely given us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand for prayer on page 10. Though you had every cause to condemn us for our sins, O Lord, your mercy came to our rescue and delivered up your own Son to be our Savior and Redeemer. He willingly accepted the cross, its suffering and its death, that his cross might be raised up as the means to hope and salvation for all who trust in him. Give us every comfort through our cross and inspire us to faithfully raise it up through the witness of our words and our lives, that all may know with us the love that has set us free. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our last hymn. service tomorrow. We'll have a Good Friday service at 7 p.m. And then also our Easter Sunday services are at the time they usually are at 6.30 a.m. Sunrise service and 9.30 a.m. Communion will be served during that, those services as well. The only difference this year is there is no Easter breakfast in between uh, services on, on April 4th. Uh, the other thing to point out to you, two things to point out to you, is that first of all, that we have a, uh, a voters meeting tonight to call a first and second grade teacher and a seventh and eighth grade teacher and principal. That will happen tonight. Uh, there's also going to be a special voters meeting, um, and we'll discuss maybe the time of exactly when that's taking place on April 11th. Uh, the three issues that we're going to be talking about there is future busing at our school as well as uh, masonry work needed on the school building and then calling a second pastor uh, as well. Um, so we'll, we're going to talk about the time for that meeting tonight at the meeting here. Those are the announcements that you need to know. Uh, the only other thing, too, is that it's been passed along to me that there's a lot of fruit in the basement, oranges, grapefruit, and grapes. So uh, first come, first serve. Feel free to take them as you will. Lord's blessing to you, and have a safe and blessed evening.